All right, all right. You know what time it is. Neil Ratna Rock Doc here with a story. So my old friend Ed Gwenta celebrated his 76th birthday on December 28th. And today I thought I'd tell you a little about Edgar and my time as road manager for Edgar's band, Edgar Winter's White Trash, that you might not know. And as usual, a little background first. <laughs> All right, so both Edgar and his older brother Johnny were born with albinism, meaning they lacked the skin pigment melanin. Now, what's interesting is that neither of their parents were albino, although, obviously, they were carriers of the gene, thereby transmitting the disorder to both sons. Now, just about everybody in the Winter household played an instrument, which provided a very rich musical environment for both Johnny and Edgar. And when Johnny decided to play guitar, Edgar, who was already identified as a child prodigy, learned to play all the other instruments focusing really on keyboards and sax and vocals as well. Now, Johnny began attracting attention, signed a management deal with New York nightclub owner Steve Paul, who had the famous club, The Scene. <laughs> now, Steve was able to get Johnny a huge record deal with record company president Clive Davis, who was also impressed with Edgar and Edgar's first album, his solo album called Entrance soon followed. Great album. If you haven't heard it, check it out. Particularly check out Tobacco Road. Very unbelievable. All right. Now, it was, when it was time to record his second album, Edgar saw a chance to satisfy a dream he had of putting together a band of old friends from the area where he grew up around East Texas and West Louisiana. Edgar wanted a band with horns, a kick-ass drummer, and another singer he could trade off with. So the first person he called was local legend Jerry the Count LaCroix, <laughs> a legend down in the Louisiana area and a great singer. Bobby Ramirez, an old friend from Port Arthur, Texas, was the kick-ass drummer he was looking for. John Smith, another old friend from Louisiana, played tenor sax. Mike McClellan on trumpet, George Sheck on bass, and Floyd Radford on guitar, and the band was set. Now, in 1971, Edgar and the band went into Columbia Recording Studios in New York to record their debut album, and that's when I came into the picture. Through the efforts of Rick Derringer, who was playing in Johnny Winter's new band, I got the job as road manager for Edgar Winter's New band, Edgar Winter's White Trash, featuring Jerry LaCroix. <laughs> now, initially, I spent weeks in the studio where the band was recording their debut album. Fun at first, but after a while, it was like, when are we going to get on the road? And eventually, of course, we finished the album and we did go on the road. A lot tougher than I thought it was going to be. We were virtually unknown. But the band was great, and it didn't take long to build a following. Now, our first major tour was supporting Jethro Tull. And by the end of the tour, believe me, people knew who we were. A major highlight of my time with Edgar was playing Closing Night of the Fillmore East, an evening I will never forget. Bill Graham loved the band and personally asked Edgar to play along with Jay Giles, Albert King, and of course, the Allman Brothers. I spent about a year with Edgar, and as most of you know, the rest of my, and most of you know the rest of my story, Edgar went on to much greater success with the Edgar Winter Group, with Chuck Ruff, Dan Hartman, and Ronnie Montrose, and I suppose most people know Edgar Winter from the songs Frankenstein and Free Ride from the album They Only Come Out at Night, which is a shame, because Edgar is so much more than that. He played sax on Meatloaf's All Revved Up With No Place To Go, Dan Hartman's Instant Replay, Tina Turner's Simply The Best, and David Lee Roth's remake of Just a Gigolo, as appearing on material by Derringer and Johnny and Montrose, Ty Rundgren, Michael McDonald, many others, and of course he was a member of Ringo Starr's All-Star Band on multiple occasions. Edgar's music has also been used for film and TV, including Taste and Confused, My Cousin Vinny, Wayne's World 2, The Simpsons, and many, many more. And Edgar's new tribute album to his brother, Johnny, is a record you all should hear. It's incredibly well worth 
listening to. All right. That's my story. The great Edgar Winter. If you've never seen him, I'm sure he'll be out on the road at some point. Check him out. Great multi-instrumentalist, songwriter, singer. Really, he's the whole package. Edgar Winter. All right. That's my story for today. Hope you enjoyed it. I'll have more as the weeks go on. And as I like to tell you, always remember to keep on rocking. All right. See you somewhere real soon. Bye for now.